G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Tuesday evening here in Australia and the market sitting at almost $1.5 trillion. So we are down a little bit. Again, we had that pump and now the market's pulled back a little bit. But it's just as of right now, it's pulled back a little bit from where it was earlier. So it is still on an upward trend at the moment, but we'll get to the charts and there's something very, very interesting happening. Right, but look at the dominance starting to climb. I mean, 47%. I think Bitcoin's going to go over 50% dominance fairly quickly, particularly if it really starts to get on a move. I think you'll see a lot of altcoins bleed a little bit at first because everyone's going to want to, again, chase that you know Bitcoin sort of move. Uh, and then eventually you will start to see you know, more money moving into the altcoins. I mean, there's money moving into the altcoins now. That's part of the reason that the total market cap is up. But I think a lot of people will try and chase that Bitcoin pump. You know, you really want to get in before it's starting to pump or right as it's starting to pump. And look, we're still waiting for confirmation on exactly whether, you know, is this just a bit of a fake out? So uh, a bull trap? So it goes down and then makes everyone think that it's going to go back up before it goes down even lower. That's definitely possible. I don't think it's likely, but that's just my opinion and I never offer financial advice. But so far on the charts, we're still waiting to see exactly what's going on. But anyway, let's move on from that. We'll have a look at the charts very shortly. All right, Bitcoin price 37, nice way back down to single digits, just under a dollar there. But again, we can see there's a bit of a retracement over the last 24 hours. So... What's done the best in the last 24 hours? In the top 100, have we had any really big movers? Nothing sort of too big. Again, it's not just simply going to jump from, you know, 30,000 and go to 100,000, like a lot of people are kind of thinking Bitcoin's going to get to. It's going to take a while to get to 100,000, and there's going to be some volatility. It's going to spike up really high, and it's going to spike down really low. And, you know, the market is going to do everything it can to shake out the weak hands. And look, there's, you know, a number of Twitter feeds out there at the moment that are showing that a ton, an absolute ton of shorts got liquidated because they pushed the price up high enough. And now they're letting the price come back down. We got up to 40,000, heading back down to 37 sort of thousand. And look, we could go a little bit lower. We could come back down and test 32, $34,000. Completely possible. And then everyone's going to get, you know, super bearish again if it gets down to $32,000, $34,000 and they're going to try and short it again. And then it's going to pump back up again. And then when everyone's getting too crazy and going, no, it's going to the moon, it's going to dump again. That is literally the way the market plays. You can almost, and again, not financial advice, but you can almost, you know, have a look at where all the shorts and longs are going and bet against it. Whatever's the, you know, if most people are going long, you could put in a short. Now, I don't do any leverage tra trading and I'm not recommending you do that, but it's, you know, it happens enough that you just counter trade what everyone else thinks is going on and, you know, quite often it does it. Again, I, w I don't recommend leverage trading. I don't do it. So I'm not saying go out and do that at all. But in all fairness, that's what the really big players do. But they don't always do it though. Sometimes they want the market to go in the direction everyone wants it. They've built their position and then they're like, all right, yep, now I want to go long. So they'll come to the spot market and they'll start buying a little bit and a little bit and a little bit. And it then, you know, gets everyone super excited and then everyone jumps on the hype train and then they really start to push it up. And as it starts to go up, they have their price points where they're going, right now, I'm going to sell a little bit here and I'm going to sell a little bit here and I'm going to sell a little bit here. And then when it gets to this price, I'm going to dump and I'm going to dump on the market and they're probably going to short at the same time. So that's what you need to remember with. That's why I don't do leverage trading. It just, it, yeah, it's not my thing. I know there's people out there that probably make quite good money out of it, but I'm just an investor and I like to buy when it's down. I try not to buy into things that are at all time highs. Now, again, it's not to say that I won't buy into them for a swing trade, because quite often when something hits a new all-time high, if you're there at the right time, it's going to go a little bit past it. It'll come back and retrace down to it again, and then it'll really start to rock it. But sometimes it can go a little bit past it and then just really dump. It was basically a fake out, so you have to be careful with it. And again, I don't do a lot of swing trading, but on occasions I do do, I do, sorry, I do do, <laughs> I do some swing trading. 
sometimes it works out really well for me. Most of the time, uh, it's you know, I break even or I lose money. So yeah, that's that's kind of the the sum of it. Hence why I don't do it a lot. But anyway, let's have a look. Ten percent to Swiss Borg, so nice. Axie Infinity, I mean, just continues to go. And the scary thing is, you know, these games. I mean, if it goes viral, it could go up. You know, a whole lot more. Uh, I, I'm not you know a big gamer anymore i'm a little bit older now so i still play some games but nowhere near like what i used to so you know i love the whole nft and digital space and all the rest of it but i just don't know if i can jump into games i don't know enough and knowing my luck i'll buy the old time high but in saying that knowing my luck if i don't buy it would have been the best time to buy so it is what it is but you know congratulations to all those uh who are getting on board okay b so look one double digit gain and then we just got some, you know, a couple of reasonable single digit gains. And then we really are just into the low single digit gains, you know, barely a percent or two. Any gains a good gain, but yeah, we we want the double digits at least. That's what we're here for in the crypto space. And anything more than 15% in 24 hours is a pretty good gain. But you need to remember that generally when you get those kind of gains within 24 to 48 hours, you're going to lose some of it. So that's the way it is. And that's where the trade is going to play. Again, I'm more an investor. All right. What about losses though? Has anything not done so well considering the market is down on average 2.8%? There we go. All right. Ucash, they uh, had a 15, nearly 16% loss. So that's not good. Theta token down as well. And I bought some Theta the other day. I don't know whether I uh, have uh, lost some from then or if I'm still up or not. We'll have to wait and see. I still like Theta and I'm going to get into the whole staking thing and all the rest of it. Bought some T-Fuel as well. So uh, again, nothing crazy though, like, though. As I said, I'm not getting too carried away in the altcoin space just yet because we still really need to see what Bitcoin's going to do. It's got to break some levels before I'd go throwing too much money at altcoins. I already did buy uh, some altcoins on the dip uh, and unfortunately they dipped even further but in the end I still was buying them at you know, basically two-thirds of their all-time highs. So I'm pretty confident that at some stage they'll get back to their old, old all-time highs and I'll make some good coin. But my main focus, as I say at the moment, it really is kind of Bitcoin and Ethereum. They're just kind of the safest bets out of you know cryptocurrency which a lot of people will tell you is anything but safe but that's a matter of opinion the space has been here for a while i've been in it for a few years now more so definitely since that crash last march but you know sort of on and off but more uh, on since 2017 and i just yeah i've seen it around long enough to believe in it particularly bitcoin and you know some of the altcoins like ethereum and that but anyway the losses we got some uh, one double digit loss and then we got a number that are up there close to a double digit. So again, hence why there's that retracement. I think, you know, we could see some more retracement and it wouldn't be bad for Bitcoin, again, to come back and retest $32,000, sort of $34,000. It doesn't mean it has to. It just wouldn't be bad if it did. But if it went back down to retest $30,000 or $29,000, $28,000, well, that probably would be pretty bad. So let's jump over to the Bitcoin chart and have a look. Only a few news stories that we're going to look at. So as we can see, look at that move. I mean, it's just green candle after green candle after green candle. I think we're at about seven days worth of green candles at the moment. That generally means a red one's coming. And we can see this day uh, is eight hours into it. And it's an indecision candle at the moment. And look where it is. It's sitting right on this line that I've had there for a while. It has been support, support support resistance resistance support 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 resistance resistance uh sort of resistance support support uh resistance and support a number of times so it's basically that kind of thirty six thousand ish dollar level let's have a look what are we at about oh it's under thirty seven thousand so really we'll have to say about thirty six thousand five hundred ish thereabouts six hundred yeah, 36,000, well, 36,800. There you go. And we're sitting right on it now. So we really need to see if this can make this a support or do we, again, like I said, have to come back down and maybe retest some of these levels here. 33, 34,000, look, maybe even sort of 32,000. Come back down and retest this before we go up. Or we could just use this as support. But 
I'm not going to be overly confident that we are literally back in a bull market. Don't get me wrong, I think we still are. But I could be wrong. I've been wrong before and I'll absolutely be wrong again. I don't know at all. I'm, any, I'm not an oracle. And again, I have to say this, definitely not a financial advisor. But for me, I need Bitcoin to break this. So we need to get over that kind of $40,000 level. Really around about sort of 42000 So up around about here. <coughs> Excuse me. And we need to be able to break through this because this is downward trending at the moment. So at the moment, as of today, really... That's over here. We would need to break about 46,000. If we got to 47,000, got a breakout and come back and retested this and then started to go up, then I would be, you know, quite confident that we're back in a, a confirmed bull market. At the moment, we're still in an unknown. Because what we can see here is this red line. That's actually the 200 day moving average. Resistance, resistance. We may come up hit this and then fall down again. So under the 200 day moving average prior to now has meant we are in a bear market. We've got the big money here. They're starting to, you know, they're really trying to manipulate the price. And I'm not saying it's so much being manipulated right now, but they do definitely want to keep it as low as possible until they can get as much as possible. And that is why they're going to keep it at prices that look bearish to scare people out until they've got as much as they can and then they can't keep the price down any longer without actually costing them uh, Bitcoin, then they're just going to let it run. Hence why I like being an investor. All I gotta do is look for times when it is cheap. 50% plus uh, is a time to buy. So again, 64,000, I was more than happy to buy Bitcoin at 32, 34,000. Not a problem, basically half price. And I would have kept buying it all the way down from there. Once it gets back up above 64,000, well then I'm not chucking all my money into Bitcoin at that moment because we're in price discovery. Still buying a dollar cost average. I almost never stop buying unless I think there's gonna be a big dump and then I'm gonna hold off a little bit. But really once Bitcoin starts to go into its parabolic run, I am still buying a little bit of Bitcoin, but I'm, that's what I'm really focusing on altcoins because Bitcoin's already running. Why do I want to chase something that's already running? Again, I am putting some money into it, but I'm now putting money into the alts because I know the alts pump after Bitcoin. That's the way the cycles work. Now, at some stage that may change, but until it changes, that's what I do. Bitcoin's pumping, uh, particularly when it's at all-time highs. All right, I'm not chasing Bitcoin put a little bit in and I just really go after the alts because I know once Bitcoin levels out and stops, the alts are going to go spastic. And then I take some of the profits from the alts, put them back into Bitcoin because Bitcoin is likely dumped or retraced from there. And then I have USDC on the side as well. That's my plan. Uh, if that's something that you like, then you know you can consider that. But again, don't simply copy me or copy anyone for that matter. Just because it works for them, it may not work for you. All right, a couple of news stories. Very quick, I don't want to take up too much more of your time. Goldman and Sachs are filing for a DeFi ETF tied to public companies. So it's not the kind of DeFi that you're thinking. So it's not an ETF that's actually linked to DeFi. It's a ETF that's linked to companies, so public traded companies that have aligned themselves with DeFi. So it's still old legacy traditional finance that they're investing in. So it says here, according to filing today with the Securities and Exchange Commission, it's ready to offer an exchange traded fund or ETF linked to companies in the sector, but not again. So they're not investing in like Aave or synthetics or compound or anything like that. They are investing in, you know, again, I guess what we call real world companies that are onboarding onto DeFi. So the Goldman Sachs Innovative DeFi and Blockchain Equity ETF will provide investors with exposure to companies aligned with the themes of blockchain technology and the decentralization of finance. So, I mean, you go down here and Charlie Shroom, he says, Goldman Sachs DeFi fund contains only legacy companies and has zero crypto initiative companies. So again, it's not investing in Aave, it's not investing in Compound or Synthetics or Uniswap or anything like that. It's investing in old, old, you know, stock, uh, yeah, companies with stocks and things like that that are aligning themselves with the DeFi and blockchain space. So still, you know, 
somewhat positive, uh, but I think they will definitely change in the not too distant future and they will have, again, ETFs for DeFi and things like that. But we may still be, you know, a year or two away from that. We need regulation and that's what is really holding back a lot of the big companies from getting more into crypto other than just Bitcoin and Ethereum. That's really where most companies are, are going at the moment outside of VC venture firms and things like that. But big publicly traded, excuse me, companies and that, they're not jumping into crypto at the moment. They're circumnavigating it by going after, again, things like this, ETFs and that, that are tied to it, but not actually buying it. All right, plan B, he's holding strong good and good on him. Plan B explains why he sees Bitcoin trading at $5 million in the future. And for that, he is not selling his BTC. Five million. That is a lot. I, I, I don't know how long it's going to take to get to there. Uh, I'm guessing for on his stock to flow, the S2F model, it's probably within the next decade or so. But again, we'll have to wait and see. As soon as you put a prediction out like that, all of a sudden there's people that want to try and counter trade that because they know everyone then starts to chase that. So it's not that it couldn't do it, it's just that it's going to be hard work and there's going to be big money trying to make sure it doesn't get there too early and too quick until they're absolutely ready and they've got you know the lion's share of everything or at least as much as they can get. But $5 million, that would be very, very impressive. And he even goes on to say that he's not really selling any of his Bitcoin. He might sell a little bit when he thinks a bear market is coming, you know, just to have some cash on the side to buy some more, so reinvest when it comes back in. But even that's risky. There's no guarantees that he will get that right. But he basically says he's holding on to his Bitcoin uh, till it hits somewhere between $1 million and $5 million. That's where he'll start to, you know, take, I guess, more profits from there. But even then, if you're taking your profits from Bitcoin, what's the thing that's better that you can put your money into? So it's not just that, oh, well, Bitcoin's hit, you know, 1 million or 5 million or 20 million or whatever it's going to hit. You've then got to ask yourself, where is a better place for me to now put my money, you know, that profits? Because if there is nowhere better, well, then what's the point? You may as well leave it there, other than maybe some diversification. All right. Here's a very interesting one. The founder of investment management firm Michael Lee Strategy says that the best days of Bitcoin are definitely ahead of it. Expecting the cryptocurrency to make all-time new highs, the strategist further says that it will be a long time before we see any sort of taper or any sort of restrictive policy from the Fed or other central banks worldwide. I would agree. They're going to hold back. There's definitely going to be some regulation. They want to see what this thing can do. Can it hold up? Can it continue on its way? Or was 64,000 the peak? You know, will it never ever get above that? Was that, you know, kind of the all time high before it just goes, you know, basically to nothing? Because that's what people think about Bitcoin in this space. They're unsure and they're waiting to see if it can repeat what it has done previously. Because as they say, uh, what it's done in the past isn't always indicative of what will happen in the future. Uh, that's not exactly the saying. I can't remember it off the top of my head. But basically, the past is a good indicator of where it might go. But it doesn't mean it's going to repeat itself. And that's what people are worried about at the moment. Uh, and even regulators and that, they're not sure. They're hoping that Bitcoin can do it in some ways. Because if it can't, then we're stuck with an old legacy finance system that's failing and breaking all around us. They need this to work. They just need to see, number one, if it can, if it can hold up to the rigor of sort of, you know, not quite worldwide adoption yet, but that will likely come. But can it hold up to the pressure uh, that's going to be placed on the system as it continues to get bigger? And if they work out that it can, they then need the legislation to make sure that they're going to make tons of money from it. Because that's literally what it comes down to. The governments and the regulators and that, they want to be on top of this so they can take advantage of it and have all the taxes set in place and all the regulations to protect themselves. Also, you know, the smaller users, but not as much. They're really not that worried about protecting us. They'll pretend like they are and they'll say, these laws are here to protect everybody. But, you know, name me a bank, a big bank that hasn't, done the dirty on people before big hedge funds that hasn't done the dirty you know completely manipulating markets and but you know i.e. ripping people off and you know 
not embezzling money because they can't embezzle money, but you know, all kinds of dodgy, shady stuff they've done with money. You know, terrorism money's been funded through them and wash traded and all the rest of it, manipulating gold prices, silver prices, you name it. All the big banks and hedge funds and things like that have done stuff like that. And what happens to them? Nothing. They get a slap on the wrist and it's monetary fine. They're making millions and billions of dollars. You know, you go to some big massive uh, venture capital, not so much venture capital firm, but hedge fund or some big massive bank or something like that and you say, radio, you've been bad, you know, we're going to give you a $50 million fine. A $50 million, a $100 million, two $300 million fine for companies that make, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars a quarter, if not hundreds of millions and even billions of dollars a year you know that's like someone coming to you know at least me i don't know what your financial situation is like and they say radio mate we got to give you a fine of a hundred bucks yeah it hurt me for the week maybe even two weeks that might kind of hurt or a month possibly but generally i'm going to get over that pretty quick a hundred dollars isn't going to make or break me and that's the same thing of that those fines that are offered out to these companies that get caught doing the wrong thing. It doesn't do much to them. Yet the average person, if we were caught doing something like that, we'd likely be looking at jail or the fines would be so big that it would take us years to be able to, you know, get you know, pay them off and get past it. But it's not the same for the big end of town. Unfortunately, they generally look after each other. All right, last but not least. So everyone got a little bit pumped. You know, the rumor was Amazon was going to accept uh, Bitcoin uh, payments. Not that too many people are really going to want to pay for much in Bitcoin. It's a, you know, it's a store of wealth more than it is anything else. But Amazon has come out and said, and plain and out said that they deny the rumors uh, for the support for Bitcoin uh, as part of the payment system. And look, that may have something to do. Oops, sorry, we go over here. Of why the price of Bitcoin has come down a little bit, down around 37. I think that's still more of the market just making a move. And this uh, news is still new, so it's only four hours ago. So, I mean, yeah, we'll have to wait and see whether that's really going to play a big difference or not. I really don't think it is, because again, I don't think too many people were really going to buy too much from Amazon with Bitcoin anyway. It'll be more interesting because they're also the rumor was or at least is that they're going to accept some other cryptocurrencies. And, you know, BitBoy's come out and he said that there's a rumor that they might be uh, supporting Algorand. So that will be more uh, interesting to see if they come out and say that. And then what maybe happens to the price of Algorand and things like that. All right, I won't take up too much more of your time. It's late here. I've <laughs> got to get ready, get up, uh, got to get ready to go to bed and get up early in the morning. That's the kind of life I live. Still got a job. All right, stay safe. Be kind to one another. While we may not be on the gain train in this little short amount of time, we you know we all should be on the gain train at least over the last kind of six or seven days. All right, that's it from me. I'll see you next time.